Hello everybody, welcome back to Sharon Cullen Art. Today I am going to be doing a gouache tutorial. It'll be a um, kind of a beginner gouache tutorial or advanced beginner gouache tutorial. And uh, I'm sorry, we've got help going across my painting. <laughs> anyway, um, I wanted to do something earlier and I've just been kind of feeling blah because I had surgery on my hand, which went very well. It does hurt, but it's okay. It's no big thing. And um, I've got my left hand and I'm left-handed, so that works out perfectly. I have no restrictions with using my right hand except that I can't lift more than five pounds. And that's not usually an issue. Uh, I do have difficulty opening things like my little my little paint tubes are a little bit hard to open, especially if they're ones that get gunky and they're old and they got stuff around the edges. Then it gets to be a little more difficult. But today we're going to be doing this painting, and uh, it is a frosty um, scene, scene with frost on the grasses at a lake. So I thought I would do that with you. I did have another one that I had posted on Instagram that I was going to do with you. Um, but then I was looking around and realized that somebody had already done a painting. You know, sometimes the same photos get used, you know, and somebody did a painting on this, which looked very similar in colors. So, um, I decided not to do that one. So I'm doing this one. I didn't see anybody else had done this one. And this one should be a lot of fun. I am using only four colors and some white. So uh, you won't need much to get started. Just a little primary yellow, Payne's gray, some red, um, yellow ochre, and white, and that is it. And I hardly used the red. I did a little bit, but not much. And so, Anyway, um, that's pretty much it. As far as my surgery goes, it went very well. Surgery was 10 minutes long. I had a nerve block, which was amazing. They wanted to put me to sleep, and I'm like, eh, I have alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. I'd rather you don't put me to sleep. It's hard on my lungs. So they gave me a little bit of sedation, a little propofol, and a nerve block that they did in the um, room before I went to the OR. And my arm was dead until the next morning at 5 a.m. So zero pain, but it was starting to feel very bizarre and uncomfortable. And I was getting to the point where I couldn't wait for it to wear off because it was paralyzed. And I just had this flopping appendage. I kept it in a sling, but um, if I leaned forward, then all of a sudden I'd feel this thing like hit against me and wonder, what did, what did I just run into? And realize, oh, it's your arm weird, weird feeling. I've had blocks before, but they were like for lower extremities. So you're just laying in a bed. You're not moving around. You know, it, it was just weird. I think I did have one for my left arm once when I had wrist surgery. Uh, so anyway, had to take my nail polish off to have surgery. So I managed to put my nail polish back on and gave myself a little flowers for spring. Um, and yeah, so that's pretty much it. Sorry that my hair looks like this. I can't do my hair. <laughs> and I couldn't even get a brush through it. I mean, I could get a brush through it, but not well. Putting it up in a ponytail, this was the best I could do. And uh, yeah, so that's what you get. Pat had to do it for me yesterday. It was really, really sad. So let's get going on this painting. I hope you enjoy it. I'm gonna talk you through it as we go. And um, I'll go through the brushes that I'm using. And yeah. That's pretty much it. Let's get started. Okay, to start, like I said, I just used a primary yellow, Payne's gray, a pyro red, which it doesn't really matter what red you choose, and uh, yellow ochre and white. All of these were M. Graham except for the yellow ochre, which was Daniel Smith uh, gouache. So those are the only colors we will be using. We'll be using the Payne's Gray not only for the sky, but also to mix the green for the tree. Actually, Payne's Gray and Primary Yellow make some really pretty 
greens. Now I was thinking of using that brush for a blending brush, but it ended up I did not need to use those brushes. So I set those aside and unfortunately I'm going to be off frame when it's time to look at the brushes I will be using, but for the brushes I'm using my um, King Art brushes. That right there is a silicone blender that I'm using for mixing some of the paint. I don't use it the whole time. I make a mess, but I have my half inch flat. I have a two, four, and six round, um, and then I use my three eighth inch angle brush there that I have, and a 10 knot liner, but any liner will do. So that's all of the brushes that I'm using. And those are my Golden Premium King Art brushes. King Art sells a variety of different artist brushes from student quality all the way up through professional, even into um, animal hair brushes. These are synthetics, Golden Taclon. And now I'm going to go ahead and start by just putting the ground in on this painting. That's the only part I'm going to draw in. Gouache covers everything else up. So putting the ground in kind of gives me uh, a basis for knowing where the lake goes and the sky, etc. So um, let me go ahead and draw that in and we'll get started. So looking at the picture, you can see that the ground begins just below the halfway point uh, on the photo. And then I will usually like put a dot in there. Then I look over to the left to see where the water and the ground are. And I see how far in from the left side it is along with the bottom point and where that ground, that little bit of ground ends up at. So you can see I'm looking at that point there and then I come down to the bottom here to find out where I want to end and then I go ahead and draw in the rest of it. And it doesn't have to be exact, but um, I was a little bit off, but it's not a big deal. And it makes your picture yours, you know. But uh, that is all I wanted to draw in. I'm not drawing in any of the trees or any of that because it's easy enough to do um, once I have the gouache going. So that's all I'm going to use. Now you can see in the background of the photo is a darker gray area, which looks to me that it's a tree line, but it's all fogged out, which makes putting those trees in very simple. And um, I realized that I make a mistake and bring the tree line right down to the ground line, line, but I will change that with some white paint and lighten the gray on the lake area uh, just before the distant trees. You'll see what I'm talking about when I get there. Now I'm not using watercolor paper, so it's a little bit of a challenge, but I am wetting this paper a little bit, uh, which dries fairly quickly. Uh, it soaks right in and then it makes this this paper horrible. It'll peel up and all sorts of stuff. So I do not recommend this Stillman and Burn Beta book. You're better off using watercolor paper. Uh, so I wet that and now I'm just going to mix up some light gray for the sky. And I'm going to be shading the sky. It'll change. Uh, I'm going to add a little bit of light in the upper left hand corner so that I can put a shadow on the trees and just make it a little more interesting. At the end of the painting, I think off screen, I add just a bit of, I dab a bit of yellow in there very lightly, very light pale yellow in order to give the illusion of the sun so that there is some difference in the sky. And I'm not doing that right now, so I'm just telling you that so that you can put it in if you want to. Now I'll just go in and fill in this whole area with the gray, a thin layer. I don't need it to be very thick. I'm going to be building this up as time goes on, but I just want to get the base layer of gray down. And then later I'll be using a dabbing motion in order to blend colors together. I kind of like the way it looks. It kind of gives it an oil painting look or something. It's just really pretty that way. Now here, it looks like I left the tree line right down to the ground line in the foreground, and that's where I went wrong. It's actually above that. So the part that's left white there is actually lake, and I'll realize that in just a minute. 
And now I've mixed a little darker gray to put the tree line in, and this is where I'm going to realize I made the mistake. And uh, I'll go ahead and fix that in just a minute. I'll bring the tree line up a little bit higher, and then I'm going to put the, the lighter gray in there. Um, yeah, that's what I'm doing right there. I'm just taking that off so that I can add a little bit of white paint there, and then I'll go ahead and raise the tree line just a little bit. Hey there, my love. Sorry about that. <laughs> so now you can see I've got the lake back in there, and I'm going to put a little darker gray in again, and I'm going to raise that tree line a little bit. I realized the gray just wasn't quite dark enough, and there's going to be blending going on, so you don't have to worry about the marks from your brush point looking flat like that unless you want to make them look like trees right away. You can do that. I just did it a little bit differently. And um, I'll be going in and dabbing in and out of those gray areas to make it look uh, more like trees. Now I'm going to go ahead and add in some more gray. And I'm kind of blending this. Makes it look a little bit dark. But then I'll go in with a little bit of lighter gray. And I'm just going to kind of fiddle with it until I get it where I want it to be. Now I'm just adding some gray over into the main area. It starts out a little bit light, so I'm going to add a little bit more to darken it because it needs to be pretty dark. In fact, I should have just put it in there um, completely dark, but it's dark enough. It leaves that, that look after I'm done with the painting. Maybe not quite as dark, but pretty good. And then I'm going in with a base layer of just some yellow ochre and white just to fill in the white area so that that's not showing through. And then I'll start putting the grasses in with darker paint. Now while that's drying, I'm gonna go ahead and mix up some green with my yellow and my Payne's gray to start with the pine tree. I want that green to be pretty dark. And I'm just dabbing in the branches with the tip of my flat brush. I'm using my half inch flat here and I'm just dabbing in some branches here and there. Then once I get them dabbed in, I'm sorry about my hand being in the way. Um, it's the camera angle coming down from the top. I don't have a second camera set up to, to show you from the side, but I'm going to dab up with my kind of dry brush upward with my brush and it's going to leave like the look of pine needles and I will pull them down as well on those branches and then once that's done I'm going to go ahead now I'm mixing up a brown for the first tree on the right which is in front of the pine tree I'm just going to go ahead oh actually no I'm putting the one in on the ground while that dries and I may be off a little bit it ends up extending past the uh ground cover but that's okay it doesn't matter I'm just going to go in and then I switch my brush to a smaller brush to go in and put in the finer branches and once those are in then I will go back and begin working on the trees that are standing upright in the background okay I'm going to darken that gray that I had there that gray mixture and make a brown for the first tree over there on the right hand side in front of the pine tree one looks like a birch and the other one looks like it might be an aspen or something like that so I'm keeping that one a little more brown and just putting in the branches the way I see them and then I, I I'm not worried about bringing it all the way to the ground because there's grasses that sit in front of that then I go ahead in with a kind of a very light gray for that birch tree and I will go ahead and use some of the gray to put in the marks along the bark of the birch tree. And once I get my branches in, I will go ahead and add some shadowing off to the right of those tree trunks, and then we'll move on. While that's drying, though, I'm just putting in some darker brown grasses. Uh, there will be a variety of colors in this, and I'm just using a flat brush with splayed ends and just sweeping upward. You can also use a rake brush. I will use that at some point in here and you'll see a little bit of difference. But a flat brush works too. You can just use that and getting those grasses in. Eventually, we will work down to the um, liner brush 
to get the longer grasses in and the more sweeping motion. I just wanted to get something in underneath. You want those grasses to look like they're going every which way. As you look at the photo, you can see that the grasses are kind of heavy and laid down from the frost, but they're all tangled. And now I'm taking some white paint and I'm just tapping that along the branches of the pine tree to show that there's some frost on the pine tree. And now putting in the branches on the other two trees. They kind of come out and then they, they swing real low. So I'm going to have those bending downward and coming down toward the ground. And the tips will have a little bit of frost on them. You may not be able to see it on camera, I'm not sure. But I'm putting in the marks of the birch tree there. And then I will go ahead and put shadowing in along the trunk line. As you look at my sky, you can see that I don't have any brightness in the sky yet. I will be going back and adding more white to the upper left-hand corner of the sky. Oh, here, I'm putting it in now. And then at the end, I'm going to add a little bit of yellow onto that white just so that it looks more like a sun. But I wanted some brightness to show through so that we could put some shadowing there on the trees. And I'm using a tapping motion now to blend. And I'm tapping it outward. And then I'll use a little bit of gray and I'll tap that inward. And I'll just keep working that back and forth until I get the color I want. Now using full thickness paint or full strength paint will help to keep you from lifting the layers down below if that's what you would like to do now for the white that's basically what you want to do um, i want this to blend out pretty evenly so i'm going to work it back and forth until it blends out and just kind of fades away Now we'll go ahead and we will add more of the swooping branches onto those trees. I really can't see many branches swooping inward toward the pine. I'm sure there are a few, so I do put a few of those in. But for the most part, I have them hanging outward so that um, you can see those branches. And trees are going to grow toward the sunlight anyway. So if the sun is blocked on that side, they're not going to grow as many branches on that side of the tree because the pine tree is blocking the light. Now I will go ahead and add a little more of that light gray above those trees so that I can get more of a variegated tree line in there. And I'm just tapping that in. Now we'll start working on the grasses near the trees in the background there. And I'm just using my liner brush now, and I'm pulling up single pieces of grass. At first, I had just put in kind of a flat brush line of grasses just to fill in that space. Now I've added some brown with a little bit of white, and I'm starting to put the frost on that grass. Eventually, I'm going to pull it out outward a little bit more, and it'll be brighter by the time we get to the end. Now I'm working on the frost on the dead tree on the ground there, putting the frost on the top of the bark and also putting some branches in with frost on them. I don't like how light the lake is looking here, so I'm going to darken it and add the darkness in the areas where it really requires it. There is some light area as well. And then I'll go ahead and work on the grasses that are reflecting in the water. I don't end up liking how they turn out, so at the end I'm going to change it and it will look much better. Now here's where I'm going to go ahead and add a few of those grasses in the water and then put the reflection in, which does not work out correctly. I really like the way it looks at the end. I start out using brown and it's just, it's just not right for whatever reason. I like the grayer color 
later that I put on over the brown and it looks much nicer. So you may want to skip this part altogether or you can put it in and just add a little gray to that brown to make it look a little nicer. Now the actual grasses though that are sticking up there, those should be brown like they are. And in the photo, even the reflections look brown. But sometimes when you're painting, something just doesn't look right. And I guess it looks okay that way, but I prefer it at the end. I guess either way is okay. Once I smooth it out, it looks much nicer anyway. And now I'm going in with the white and I'm starting to add the frosty grasses on and I'm just blending those up. I'm still not using the liner brush yet because I wanna get more of a bulky look to fill in that area of the painting and then we'll put the finishing work on top later. Now, as you can see, I'm starting to make those grasses go every which way. You can see it more in the front and We'll gradually build up on that with some of the brown grasses and then more of the frosted grass. And uh, I'm putting a little more dark grass in front and then I'm gonna put in with a sm slightly larger brush, not my liner brush, I think I was using my number two. And I put in some bigger grasses. Now my grasses kind of came up over my dead tree here, so I have to redo a couple spots, which is fine. And it's nice with gouache that you have that option. I'm going ahead and putting the white back in again. Now I'm using the smaller brush and you can see I'm making the grasses longer, making some of them lay down, some of them stand up, but they're starting to go every which way, which makes it look a bit more natural. And then I'm pretty much done and I will take the tape off and be done with the painting. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Remember, everybody, be courageous, paint with wild abandon, and most of all, be kind to each other. God bless you all. Take care. I'll see you soon with some watercolor sketching videos.